Yeah, so let's open the exchange topic. So first yeah, of yeah. all, um, somewhat of a bad news. Um, last episode went out on July 2nd. And I think um, on J June 30th, MEXC started to impose KYC on everybody. Correct. So we knew we knew it, it could happen and we knew it was most likely going to happen at some point, but we weren't expecting it so fast. So I think it will be a little bit on the back burner. I mean, we'll keep it there. It will be in those, um, you know, in this model that we just mentioned. So we, we will offer it, but I don't think it will, uh, it will be a priority for people because obviously it will mean that now US users will not be able to, to get access to it. However, we looked into other solutions, and I think that um, it's interesting to bring um, three, three different uh, examples in that conversation. And so um, one is LBank, one is Zegex, and the other one is non-KYC. So LBank is an exchange that is, um, I believe, 17 um, in, the, in the rank. Uh, let me check that. Um, yeah, 17, that's right. And so it is a pretty interesting exchange. It has been growing um, quite a lot the last year. Um, and we actually uh, started to have a contact with them. They have a non-KYC, like a 20 Bitcoin withdrawal without KYC. Um, so again, very important topic. They're 17th. So we can expect that at some point they will impose KYC. But right now, they seems to have a very open policy. And so to be able to get there, we have um, listing fees and we have minimum liquidity requirement. And so the total to be able to reach there would be about $60,000. So that's about half. That's actually half of what uh, MEXC would cost, um, yeah. right? And then uh, there are two other exchanges which are apparently they're kind of associated. Maybe uh, you, can introduce, uh, you can introduce them, Voice. Yeah, Maybe. it was it was it was coincidental. It was uh what was it? It was Hersey who had mentioned it on Discord and it almost at the same time as we were producing the other video, um I was hanging out in some other crypto communities. Most of you know I do do some support in other communities. And they were also mentioning those exchanges that were being mentioned. I have been in communication with their their listing person. It's quite a bit less expensive, uh, obviously, because they're smaller. You could say up and coming exchanges if we're going to be positive about it. Unlike Rob, um, no, I'm kidding, Rob. <laughs> you know, so so these exchanges, uh, the listing costs, um, just basic listings, and then getting the assets on there, are are generally going to be about one one fifth, one yeah, one sixth of what it would have been. At L Bank, I think it's like ten grand, uh, ten thousand right. for like Zegex, um, but that includes you know the liquidity. Uh, that includes um, the market maker. Um, it includes so many other things because they're being aggressive. They're trying to to move up in their rankings. But you know you're talking about you're comparing a, 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 an exchange of L Bank, which is ranked seventeen. Zegex is one fifty. The great thing about it is they have basic non-KYC levels. And so that makes it good. It just requires instead of a, a situation to where uh, if you want to trade with no KYC, where it's like 20,000, I think is what we were talking about with L Bank or something is your, is your non-KYC amount. It's like 5,000 on Zegex. Um, so there is going to be some differences as these exchanges their formats and their philosophies. Um, and then there's non-KYC, which is obviously in the name, non-KYC, an even smaller exchange. I think the teams are related um, from Zegex to, to uh, non-KYC. Don't quote me on that, but the themes look very similar. But now you're talking about 7,500. That includes liquidity. That includes market making. That includes all, all the things that... Um, that uh, that make it possible. Uh, we just have to be active on these exchanges. That means those who want to trade, um, those who want to buy, need to go. And as I've always mm -hmm. done, I've always done one-on-one -on -one tutorials. So no matter what the community decides upon, whether we do land on a, on an exchange like L Bank or maybe we don't, maybe we land on another exchange. 
I will do videos. I will do walkthroughs. I'll make it easy for the newbies. I'll even make it easy for the experienced coiners. So there's no, there's no, what am I trying to say? Everything's a positive. We have opportunities. They will be coming. And I think so Niggs, you and I were talking about putting things into some sort of a, a, uh, a format that people can make decisions upon, not a Dow proposal, but a proposal, at least format for that kind of thing. So let's talk about the details, right? Because we, we just throw the pricing and all that. But sure. I think it's interesting to actually talk about the context because people don't realize, right? We come with the MEXCA exchange. It's 120K. Um, I think the gate.io was proposed like more than a year ago and it was oh, yeah. like 250K, something like that. It was 200 and So yeah. now we're proposing those exchange, which is... 10k for one and 7500 for the other so yep, the what are the difference is like what? five thousand dollars that's that's for their integration right that's so, right so the so the difference is that an exchange like mexc has two million visits per day and more than half a billion volume on the exchange right correct it is listed as uh, in the cmc ranking it is rank 11th and so that's that's the kind of thing that uh, makes it that expensive, right? So we're talking about L Bank. It is 17th, but it has 1.6 million visits per week. So Correct. it is also having a pretty good attendance and it has a little below half a billion volume per day. So it's still quite a big exchange, right? Um, now, if you look into the ZEGX and non -K uh, non-KYC.io, here you have a um, lot further XG, right? So the ZEGX is 150. It just has a uh, six, it was a little bit more than 6 million um, daily volume. And if you actually look at the pairs, most of the pairs are between 20 and 30K volume per day. So it is a very small exchange. Much right? smaller. Mm -hmm. Again, ranked 150, very small volume, but then the cost is only 10K, right? And then the Correct. other one, non-KYC is not even listed on coin market cap so this is the kind of things that makes that um, you get a lower price but as you can see it's still ten thousand dollar right for an exchange that is way down in the ranking not having much volume so um, this will be some questions that you will have to um, ask yourself way. right if yeah. you want to get in those exchanges if you would use those exchange and and again i'll just remind that we have a sandex we have be true and those do offer conditions that are actually better than those right but we'll still be looking into those and potentially get new listing because it is it is good news it is um moving forward we need more exchanges but just attracting your attention that we do have other exchanges that actually have better stats than those and that are unfortunately not being used so much yeah, yeah it, that's true. I think the community will find something they, they like or find something for whatever reason, maybe not like, they just out of habit use more. Uh, that's what happened with KuCoin. Obviously, we had other exchanges uh, 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 that we had at one time, which had greater volume. But the second we had KuCoin, the assumption is because it was higher, that it was a better exchange, then everybody stopped using everything else. And if you just use one, what 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 good is it to have these other exchanges? Well, I will tell you, it's not good to just have one exchange. It's not good to just have all of your uh, volume going through X, because as we know in crypto or in any business, if you have one vendor that's supplying you with stuff and you rely upon all your orders going through that one vendor, if anything happens with that relationship, and in this case, it's a relationship with a coin or a community, um, if anything happens with that vendor, what happens? Well, now you're, if you're a retailer or you're a manufacturer and your supplier says, nope, now you're scrambling. Now you have nothing. I think it's good that we have a range of exchanges, but it's also good that if we don't get stuck in a rut, 
and just consistently use one exchange, we should investigate, we should try, we should buy other coins too. We can go to other exchanges and try them. And if it's an easy on-ramp, and easy is of course subjective, but if it's no KYC, which you know I like, um, then there might be some opportunities to at least find other potential little nuggets or little diamonds in the rough that might be out there, but also use it for services that that you would be interested in maybe buying and trading and divvy and other, other things in these smaller exchanges, regardless of their overall volume today, that's today. Uh, you look at an exchange like non-KYC, I'm not a fanboy over any of these exchanges, but it's totally new. It's I think it's less than a year old or maybe close to a year. And so I know it's advertising it plans on getting on coin market cap sometime. I think their written statement is Q3 to Q4. So that's about, I think, a little bit over a year that they've been around. So they're moving and they're not shaking yet, but they're moving. Um, and L Bank is a beast, right? I mean, it's it's up there. It's not yeah, a beast those, like those KuCoin or any of those other ones. It's not get KYC for a long time. So it yeah. is also a play. Right. So yeah. correct. That's true. The Good. bigger they get as they start moving up on that list, that top 10 list, even in that top 20 list, you're going to be in the situation to where they're going to be KYC at some point, even though L bank has promoted itself as such, I would imagine that at some point it will be KYC. And then you'll see certain restrictions coming as they get bigger and bigger and bigger. I think you and I spoke about that Neeks. It's just, it's just a natural progression that this yeah. happens. It's the style yeah, yeah. of a sex, CEX yeah. exchange. They start off really broad and allow anyone. And then pretty soon as they get big enough, they start tightening that hole that people, that gate that people can go through. And uh, yeah. And, and I think we blood. said enough on exchange, but I, I still have to bring that point. Which, I wonder what that Scott is ruling on Chevron will do on KYC requirements and I what know. it will do on US customers not being able to hold token. Because I yep. doubt this is precise, like precisely written in the law. And yeah, I don't know. Clear um, um, understanding from the SEC. So it would be interesting to see that. Yeah, definitely. So somebody has to go to court though. Oh I yeah. Hope it's not, you know, oh yeah. yeah. I don't. I definitely don't want it to be me. I'm sure you don't want it to be you. So <laughs> I'm sure there uh, are many Bitcoin millionaires who yeah. would be able to do that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs>